Ladies and gentlemen, the story is a little bit disheartening for a lot of different reasons. And I'm going to tell you guys and be real honest with you. I looked over this story and I was like, well, it doesn't seem like it's very much to this story. Um, it seemed to be something that was really kind of short to the point. It sucks. It's really sad. But there was some elements, some very key elements that I thought made this story just a little bit more unique than some of the other stories that we've done. And I'm going to show you guys why. So please pay attention to the evidence that I'm going to present in this situation. Okay. I know a lot of people try to tell me I don't get my facts right, but guess what? These are the facts and information. These are the things that they're going to use against these people in court. Okay. So unless you want to dispute what the courts and the police are reporting that I don't know what you want me to say. Now, the two individuals that you see on this screen, one is the mother. Let's take a step back. If I can, let me see if I can go back. This is the mother. That's the baby that is in question in this story. What's crazier about this is the fact that you see this mother and she looks this way. Then you go to this picture and she looks like a different person. Maybe I'm just tripping. Maybe my eyes are just getting bad over the years. But that looks like two different people. Like that doesn't look like the same person as that lady right there. But could just be me. I don't know. But a Maryland mother has been charged with first degree murder. Not second, not third. First degree murder. After police say that she admitted to starving her 15 month old daughter for more than three weeks until that beautiful little baby that y'all saw on the screen until she died. Then what made it even more worse after that is really hard to kind of say, and I hate having to say this over the air. And I know me just repeating the story might not be able to get this video monetized. I get it. I understand, but it's important enough for me to put these details out. Okay. The crucial detail of what this mother did, not only did she murder her baby by starving her out, then she took her baby and threw this precious baby in the trash can. Threw her in the trash as if it were a meal that this woman didn't want. She threw this baby away in the trash as if it was some spoiled milk or something. I don't understand the human mentality that you would think that that's an appropriate course of action for a human being. And people might say and might claim mental illness, but I'm going to tell you, it's just a stupid person. Stupid is as stupid does, Lieutenant Dan, like they said in Forrest Gump, right? Stupid is as stupid does. And what you have is you have a lot of people who just make bad choices. They're not good people. They didn't do well in school, right? They didn't take care of their bodies. They, they, they don't take care of themselves sexually. They're irresponsible sexually. They do a lot of crazy things, okay? That does not mean that they get to get off lightly whenever they decide to take these things out on children that they decide to produce, right? When we talk about the rights of Americans, of mothers, of people, when they talk about a mother's right to choose, and I'm glad that the women in my chat understand this, that they understand that, that it's a gift. The gift of motherhood is a gift to the world that women have the ability to do, and that is to bring life into this world. It's an innate gift. It's a beautiful thing when done and used responsibly, right? So what we have to do as mothers, as women, as the AFC, what we have to do is we have to stand against anybody and everybody, no matter what color, no matter what race, no matter what age, if they do something heinous to children, we have to take a stand against that. One of the simplest things that you guys can do to take a stand is just to simply talk about it. Listen to the stories, post about them, have these conversations. Do not let the memory of these people and of these babies be forgotten. There is absolutely no reason why in this world, in America, we should be talking more about George Floyd and Ahmaud Aubrey 
and Sandra Bland and all of these other grown people, grown people who who had their chance in life to to grow up and become something great, and they chose not to. Is that going to get me flagged? Did I just make somebody mad? I hope I didn't piss y'all off too much that you want to run away from the channel. I hope y'all listen. I'm going to say that again. Those individuals that I just named had their opportunity to grow up in America and become something great with all of the wonderful opportunities that America has blessed all of us to attain. No matter what situation we're in, we all make our choices as adults. We are in the positions where we are because we chose to be there. Heller, Heller, huh? What do y'all think about that? I think that's a pretty fair statement. I don't think I'm being mean. I think it's a fair statement. Let's keep going. Kiara Tolson, let me get her face up on the screen so y'all can see this broad who looks like two different people. Her name is Kiara, K-I-E-A-R-R-A Tolson, T-O-L-S-O-N, 23 years old. This human being is 23 years old. Why does she look like she's like my age? She looks like she's almost 40 years old. I'm just being honest. But she's 23 years old of Silver Spring, and she was arrested Wednesday after her friend or an acquaintance, let's just say an acquaintance, called 911 to report that that woman that you see right there told her that she killed her daughter, that beautiful baby right there, 15 months old. And let me put some respect on this baby's name right there. Let me see if I can get a solo shot of the baby right here. That little baby's name is and was Blair Niles, N-I-L-E-S. That little baby was 15 months old. That's according to the Montgomery County Police Department, and they said that in a news release. So that's coming directly from the police. When interviewed by police, the mother told investigators that she starved her daughter for approximately three and a half weeks. Anything that you say to the police can and will be used against you in the court of law. Understood? Yes. So that is admissible in court. So why everybody tells me I get my information wrong, I don't know this mother, she was a good mama and she was on her way to college and she was doing so many wonderful, great things and, and she would never do nothing to hurt her baby. Well, she admitted to it to the police and like I said, that could be used against her. She also told police that when the girl died last month, I'm gonna say that again, when this baby died last month, put a pen in that, we'll come back to it. She placed the baby's body in a pillowcase and trash bags. That's how she treated that beautiful princess that y'all saw on my screen. She put that little baby who could not speak for herself, could not defend herself, and there was nobody there to protect this child. She took that baby and starved this baby until her little body couldn't fight anymore. And that almost makes me want to cry by saying that. This baby's body could not fight anymore. And once her body gave in, the mother took her body and put her in a pillowcase and trash bags and threw her in the garbage and discarded this baby's body in a dumpster at her apartment complex on November Circle June 17th, which was almost about one month ago. There's a reason why I'm bringing this up today though, okay? So give me a moment. Blair's body has not been recovered. I'm gonna say that again. It's been almost a month and this baby's body has not been recovered. How many stories have we done just this year alone 
of us having to scavenge and find these babies' bodies when the mothers know where the babies were, know where they threw them away, and they refuse to help the police figure out where the bodies are. That's the least they could do to at least put some semblance of respect on this lost soul. And they can't find the body after a whole month. But you know what's crazy? What's crazy about that? I'm going to throw this out there. And I know this might make some people mad. Where is Black Lives Matter? Thank you. If Black Lives Matter, why don't babies' lives matter? Why can't Black BLM, why can't BLM stand for Babies' Lives Matter? How about we, how about we hijack that movement? Can we do that? I'm going to ask y'all in the chat. Can we, can, let's take a pause for the cars real quick. Can we hijack a movement? Now we can have we can still have the AFC, but we could also take BLM and turn it into Babies Lives Matter. What do y'all think about that? Because if you ask me, it seems like Black Lives Matter only has an agenda to care about the rainbow movement. Hello. The rainbow movement and things that do not concern the black family. That's the truth. They're ambulance chasers. They're chasing specific stories that fit their narrative. That's what they're doing. When it's a white person that harms a black person, here comes the movement. But when you have a baby that small, that defenseless, that beautiful, that deserving of a chance to grow up and be something great, where is the protest for that baby? Huh? Where are the marches for that baby? Where are the people that are talking to Congress about that baby? Who is it that's having conversations and interviewing people about our babies? Who is it that's putting money up and reward money to try to get the killers of these babies in the proper custody? Who's really doing something to try to save these babies and get justice for these babies? BLM needs to stand for Babies Lives Matter. That's what it needs to stand for. And the original movement needs to be eradicated. Because I'm sorry, when you have grown people that end up in those situations, I'm sorry. It's sad, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. But they're grown. They had their chance in life. Wrong place, wrong time. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? I personally don't care. Because I was taught, because I had a mother, I had a father, and my parents taught me. And I want y'all to hear me. My parents taught me to be accountable for every situation that I get myself in, whether it's my fault or not. You know why? Because that means I have to have critical thinking and critical skills to be able to maneuver in this world because I'm not gonna always have somebody running behind me to wipe my ass. Hello? Y'all need me to say that again? Or are we good to go on that, right? Now, when interviewed by the police, she actually spoke these words and she said that she starved her daughter roughly about three and a half weeks. The mother also told police that when the baby died, she threw her body in a pillowcase and trash bags and tossed her in a dumpster at an apartment complex. Almost a month ago. And today, we still don't have this baby's body. Blair's body has not been recovered, but police say investigators found evidence in Tolson's apartment that corroborate her account. Now, a court filing says police found a pillow without a pillowcase in that mom's apartment. And I hate to even call her a mom. I don't, I don't really know what else to call her. So, are you guys ready for the pivotal point? Because that's pretty much the end of the story. But I'm sure if y'all came here, if y'all came here tonight, then y'all know DJ Just J had a little bit of a twist to this story, right? <laughs> I think most of y'all know me well enough to know that if I brought you this story, there is indeed a twist to this story. 
Oh, I hope y'all are strapped in for this. I hope y'all are ready. Are you ready? I'm gonna read it and then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what you might've missed. So here we go. The mother, Kiara Tolson, arrived at the front door unannounced. And to her friend who greeted her, Tolson seemed totally out of it. Even more concerning, Tolson didn't have her 15 month old daughter with her. Where's my goddaughter? The friend by the name of Leite Don, which is spelled L-A-Y-T-A-Y, Don, D-A-H-N. I'm gonna read that again. She said, where's my goddaughter? And she said, the mother said, oh, I starved her. Don said, well, where is she? Tolson, the mother said, she's in the trash. Tolson's mental health already appears to be front and center in this case. But it's funny because if you're gonna talk about mental health, I believe that mental health should apply to women and men and not just to mothers. Because too many times, whenever a man or a father does something bad to his kid, he doesn't get the excuse of he was going through something mental health wise. But the mothers do, whether it's valid or not. So I just think it needs to be fair on both sides. Now, the baby was born on April of 2019 and four months earlier, her friend Don had gave birth to twins. When the young mothers got together, the children all got along. She was fun to be around and she loved her baby, said Don. The mother said that we gave birth to animals. Whether she was playing or not, that's a horrible thing to say. She said, we gave birth to animals. Now, Tolson, the mother, lived in a shelter with her child at times during the past 15 months, Don said. Tolson recently had moved into an apartment, according to Don. And at about 8 p.m. Wednesday, when Tolson arrived at her door, uh, Don said, Tolson began talking so loudly and incoherently that Don remembers shutting the door behind her so others in the home couldn't hear. After saying she had killed her child, Tolson offered to take Don to the trash where she disposed of the body in the county's White Oak area, according to Don. She had seemed almost casual in explaining what she had done, almost as if she didn't give a shit. Now, let me see who caught it in the chat. <laughs> Looks like nobody caught it. Um, everybody can type if you think you know what, what, what I said. If you heard what I spoke, then I'm going to see if y'all type it in the chat. And it looks like a lot of people might have missed it. Okay. So I'm gonna read the important sentence again. Let me read it again. The mother that you see on my screen, Kiara Tolson, lived in a shelter with her child at times during the past 15 months. Tolson had recently moved into an apartment. I want you guys to keep in mind that her baby is only 15 months old. Hashtag babies for benefits. Thank you. Okay, y'all missed it? Okay, I'm gonna read it again. Tolson, the mother, lived in a shelter with her child at times during the past 15 months. Do y'all not see a problem with that? Bonjour in the chat. I see you. Bonjour. Thank you. Y'all got it now? What that means is that not only one mother lived in a shelter, but that means they both lived in a shelter at some point. Hello? <laughs> On top of that, if she starved her baby for that amount of time and the baby has been dead for a month, 
Then at what point did nobody see something and say something? At what point did somebody not realize that this woman can't take care of herself? And she probably shouldn't have this little small, tiny baby who can't speak for herself, can't defend herself, can't work for herself, can't feed herself, can't change herself, can't wash herself. And let me throw something else out there that I want to prove to you guys that people, no matter how many handouts you give them, are just going, they're just gonna fail as a people. They're just gonna suck as adults. They're gonna suck as parents. When you have a system like Title IV-D, I'm gonna say that again. Title IV-D, somebody put that in the chat. Title IV-D, Title IV-D. When you have a system where a mother can just produce a kid, hashtag babies for benefits, and the government will give them food stamps for having that kid. They will give them Section 8 housing for having that kid. They can get energy assistance for having that kid. They could also, in some states, get car vouchers for having that kid. The only other, th matter of fact, let's, let's just skip and act like child support doesn't exist in this situation because they can get that too, by the way, right? Let's just skip that part. And all that woman end up having to do is just go work, go be productive. That's it. So you mean to tell me with all that kind of help and the fact that you had a shelter, why, why did you need to starve? Why did you need to starve your baby? You had all of that help. Matter of fact, people are asking, where was the biological father? Well, guess what? I actually have an answer for you. The biological father was prevented from being able to see his beautiful little daughter. Damn. I'm going to say that again. The father wanted to be a part of his kid's life. And that creature that you see on my screen knows that she has the law on her side and she prevented the biological father from being able to spend time with his kid. And on top of that, what makes this even more egregious is I wonder at what point, how much was this baby being starved while this baby was in this shelter? And if this baby was being starved in this shelter, then how was it that nobody saw anything and nobody said anything? They had to have known that something was wrong. Now, the baby's father actually told investigators that the last time he saw his daughter was on April 17th and has not had any contact with the mother since then. State District Court John Judge John Moffett told or ordered Tolson to be held with no bond, which is good, at a hearing Thursday, according to Ramon Koronoff, a spokesman for Montgomery County State's Attorney John McCarthy. Now, Koronoff said a public defender is representing Tolson at a hearing and she's due back in court July 16th for a bond review hearing. And I hope they continue to deny her bond. And anybody who has any information about this is encouraged to call Homicide at 240-773-5070, which is the Major Crimes Division, which the number again is 240-773-5070, which is 5070. Let me go ahead and give you guys the fair usage. Then I will get into my closing thoughts right after that. All right, let's go ahead and get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 USC 107. All right. Let me see if I can get that off my screen. Here we go. We got a couple of videos. They're gonna be really short. 
This is the mugshot for 23-year-old Kiara Tolson. She's accused of starving and killing her 15-month-old daughter. According to charging documents, Tolson admitted to police her child, Blair Niles, died in their apartment on November Circle in the White Oak area of Montgomery County after suffering weeks of abuse. The little girl's body still has not been found. Police say Tolson told an acquaintance she killed her daughter, and that acquaintance then called 911. Police say Tolson admitted to investigating that she starved her daughter for about three and a half weeks and after she died, placed her body in a pillowcase and trash bags. Then on June 17th, put little Blair's body in a dumpster at their apartment complex. Police say they found evidence to support her story inside her apartment, a missing blue pillowcase. Tolson was arrested Wednesday on a first-degree murder charge. She's being held without bond. Police say the baby's father was located and said he had not seen his child since her birthday on April 17th and had not had any contact with Tolson. Court documents did not reveal any sort of motive for this killing. She appeared in court earlier today for the first time. A judge ordered her to undergo a psychiatric evaluation. She'll be back in court next week. Darcy Spencer, News 4. Now, anyone with information about this case should contact Montgomery County Police. What makes this story even worse is the fact that you had a father who seems like, I don't know anything about him, but it seems like he was willing to be in his child's life. And if you would have just given him an opportunity to be in this child's life, I could almost guarantee you that if you would have put this baby in the custody of the father, this baby would have lived. This baby would have survived. And if this mother had that much vitriol for this baby, look at her using the baby as a prop. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, I hate when, pe when people do that. When you act like you love the kids. How many of y'all know somebody who be on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram stunting on, stunting on the book, stunting on, uh, on IG, acting like they love their kids? But y'all know that they be talking all kind of crap about these, these, these kids so bad. And, ooh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a spank this kid and this kid need to go to bed. Y'all getting on my nerves. Some of y'all might have even heard that as you were growing up, but y'all have definitely heard and seen these mothers, these parents, these fathers, these whomever who hurt these babies. I've heard people speak these words. And it's just, it's just inexcusable that if you had that much vitriol for this baby, then why not give the baby to the dad? Why not? Because you know why? Because she probably wanted to make that dad suffer. She probably knew that that dad cared. And she probably wanted more so to make herself feel better by hurting the dad, which would make her feel better to see the dad hurting as opposed to a baby that grew in her womb for nine months that she sat in labor and gave birth to this baby. And apparently none of that even mattered. What mattered more to her was her personal pleasure. And that's what I'm talking about. Our priorities are so off. We care more about our orgasms. We care more about going to the club. We care more about our personal possessions. And I'm going to tell y'all a real quick story. This is no lie. It's on my channel. Y'all might remember a mother who killed her kid because the kid broke the mother's flat screen television. a television and the baby died over a TV that you probably got on a Black Friday special. That's how low a lot of people, and it's not all, I know we got some good people in the chat. I know we got some good moms in the chat. I know we got some good dads in the chat. I know we got some good neighbors in the chat. I know we got some great people here in the AFC in our chat right now. I know it's not us, but there are too many people in our society who value things that are worth nothing more than our children. And I, that's so disheartening. It bothers me to my core. And I'm gonna tell you what, I am thankful to have an audience. I'm thankful to have a microphone and I'm thankful to have a group of people who at least understand my message. 
because there's a lot of people out there that still don't get it. There's a lot of people still trying to uh, add me on Facebook, send me friend requests just so they can send me hateful ass messages. So they can email me hateful ass messages and tell me how I'm a self hater, I'm a coon and I'm wrong and I don't have the right to talk about this mother who killed her kid. But it's even more egregious when you talk about we need to protect women, we need to protect the black queen, we need to protect all women. What's so funny about that? <laughs> Let me tell y'all something that's funny. You want to know what's funny? Let me get this baby's picture on the screen. I'm going to tell y'all something really, really funny. If this baby would have been allowed to grow up, survive, and thrive, guess what that baby girl would have grown up into becoming? I would love to see somebody argue that point. So what you're saying is that it only matters when these black women or these women cross the threshold of being grown and then they matter. But why is it that our children don't matter? Why is it that we want to continue to keep making our society worse by treating our kids bad and then expecting for them to be great and awesome productive adults and you wonder why our communities are bad you wonder why our neighborhoods are bad you wonder why people don't care about it, about each other you wonder why there's so much mental illness going on you wonder why there's so much rape going on you wonder why there's so much murder going on so much robbing going on so much criminal mentality going on why people continue to stimulate their lower vibrations in their body if you believe in that type of thing you wonder why people don't really don't care they get hopeless they don't see a future they 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 don't tend to care about anything well it's because their earliest memories of growing up and being an adult and being a human they were bad memories because their parents didn't care their aunties didn't care their fathers didn't care their relatives didn't care their neighbors didn't care their teachers didn't care Nobody cared about these people while they were young. They grow up and they terrorize the entire earth. We can make a change if we start with our babies. Don't come telling me about justice for a grown person. Don't tell me about we need to go get justice for a grown person that died at the hands of a cop. Because honestly, I don't care. I don't. Grown people don't matter as much as kids do. You know why? Because that's our legacy. If you guys that watched last night and watch me and my interactions, if you can't tell what's important in my life, if you have not listened to my videos and you can't tell what's important in my life and where my, priority, my priorities are and what I truly care most about on our platform, then I don't know what to tell you and you just might not ever get the message. I think it's a simple message. It's a message of love. It's a message of respect. It's a message of preserving what I think is important. And that is, is for humanity to go forward in peace and harmony and productivity. We cannot continue to just keep beating up on our babies and wonder why our world sucks. Maybe some of what we're going through right now, a lot of people like to look at it and say, well, maybe this is the, the, the coming of revelation if y'all believe in the Bible and believe in all that religious stuff. Maybe the world is punishing us right now. Maybe the, uh, what, what, do, what do you call that? May, the spiritual realm? Maybe we're being punished because we have not cared about our babies for a long, long time. And we need to get back to caring for our babies. Maybe God will bless this earth if we start caring for our babies. They can't speak for themselves, nor can they defend themselves against the tyranny of their caretakers. So we all got to step up as a society in this world for the ones that matter. And that's our babies. Okay. 
from my heart to yours, I love you guys. I want to put some respect on this baby's name. Again, this baby's name. Blair Niles. Blair Niles, 15 months old. Young queen, young princess, beautiful baby. R.I.P. From my heart to yours, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much. That's the end of our stream, and we'll see you guys on the next stream. Please make sure you guys support the AFC, like, share, and subscribe. Come back and come see us for another video and continue to keep learning. We're going to get better, and I have a lot of faith in us, okay? We'll see you on the next stream. Peace.